Hello everybody, it is Tuesday, October 24, 2017, I'm Cody Hathaway and this is Pulsar. Uh Tonight we're getting into news of the day. Jeff Flake's out of there, Bob Corker's out of there. They're not out of there yet, but they're not seeking re-election because they can't win because they're both Republican establishment cucks and anybody that is a Republican establishment cuck is going to get primaried in 2018 and more than likely lose. They already see this. Um, we already got it in Alabama with uh, Luther Strange, who was only backed by Trump because of the Republican establishment, hoping, Trump hoping that, you know, everyone would, more people would go for him, even though Roy Moore is still going to go with him. But Roy Moore is in there, and he's probably, I could not see Alabama losing a seat. Um, so we're going to dive into that. And. We're going to go tie it into tax reform, too, so, um, yeah, we're going to have an interesting segment, and, um, lot to cover, lot to cover. Clinton DNC paid for that Russian dossier that got leaked to BuzzFeed, that got leaked to BuzzFeed, who published it as truth, later had to go through all kinds of, uh, flack for that, and this is some serious stuff, so let's see what's going on here. I mean, this is serious. It's Washington Post, too. Even the, I mean, shh. Whoever got their hands on that and had the cojones to post it on the Washington Post, uh, I'll give that editor kudos. Um, but, I mean, this is fake media right here. But they're reporting. That's how you know it's huge. I mean, that's the first time I'm seeing it, too. <laughs> Campaign. Health fund research that resulted in now famous dossier containing allegations about Donald Trump's. It was Pissgate about Trump hiring Russian strippers to piss on beds that Obama and them would sleep in. Like, come on. Like, who, who thinks that's true? Allegedly, John McCain did, so he said he gave it to the FBI. I mean, come on. Look at this. Clinton campaign and the DNC, through the law firm, continued to fund Fusion GPS's research through the end of October 2016, days before the election, election day. Fusion GPS gave Steele's reports and other research documents to... Elias, the people familiar with the matter said it is unclear how or how much of that information was shared with the campaign and DNC and who in those organizations was aware of the roles of Fusion GPS and Steel. One person close to the matter said the campaign and the DNC weren't informed of Fusion GPS's role by the law firm. Okay. Let's see what else I mean, this is huge, folks. This is actually, this is huge. I mean, yeah, Trump called for that on Saturday. We got it. DNC and the Clinton campaign paid for the Pissgate dossier. Just, can you believe that? Can you believe that? That is great. I mean, it's right there, Washington Post. Part of the fake media, even they, I mean, they had to go, have gotten the information directly to them and they just had to do it. They couldn't, they knew they weren't going to be able to get away from it. Um, wow. But literally, right as I was done with the intro, I looked right at Drudge and it changed right in front of my eyes. And I had to sit there and look at it for a second. Because um, I was looking at this. But man, that's crazy. That certainly changes the whole game. Whole game. Uranium One scandal going on right now. I mean, DNC Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Uh, it's just bad news for the Democrats all around. Bad news for Hillary. Crooked Hillary, as you see. Um, 
from this flake and corker stuff. Um, I mean, I'm sure more is going to come out with the Clinton DNC. I can cover all that tomorrow. Um, here's what I mean when I talk about flake and corker being establishment cucks, mainly rhinos. If this whole article ever loads up, uh, I hate the Hills website. It's always so laggy. Um, but you can pretty much see it in the headline there. Dems cheer flake after the speech. Especially getting on Trump. I mean, that's that's how you know what side he's really on. He's not true. That's why he needs to get out of there. And that's why a lot of the other are going to get out of there. But don't think that Democrats are all going to be all happy and stuff come 2018. Because there's a lot that's in red states. A lot that are in districts that Trump won. And um, I place a safe bet that they're all gone. And GOP is going to get the people they want in there. See, the GOP... By 2020, they're going to be a completely different party. Democrats are going to be done for. I mean, look what's all coming out, like, the rating one, all this, all this stuff. I mean, right now we got DNC paying for stuff. Um, the piss Kate document. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, the Dems were just so happy after what Jeff Flake said today. Um, I mean, it just goes to show. I mean... Actually, let's, let's look at this poll right here. 56% of Republicans want Mitch McConnell to resign, as Mitch McConnell isn't doing anything. Um, right there, Harvard-Harris poll, showing the majority of GO, GOP voters want McConnell to resign. Because here's the thing, that's the, the thing, people in Congress don't understand what their constituents and what the true mood of the American people is. The whole political elite, the whole political establishment, all of them, weren't ready for Trump, didn't think he was going to win, and he won, and he's going to win again, and we're going to keep on winning, because um, we got the policies, we got the plan that works. <laughs> yeah, and here, a little over 2,000 registered voters. Um, just for a couple days. But yeah, it's it's great news for us. Um, Kelly Ward, she was um, the uh, or Flakes potential, well, probable. Um, primary opponent, and you know, looks like she's gonna be in. She's gonna be in, uh, in the Senate, and um, she is pro Trump. And here in Pennsylvania, we have Jeff Bartos running against that lefty Bob Casey. And um, I'm not too sure about Bartos, he seems like a good guy, he seems like a conservative. We need him, and um, I'll. I'll more than likely vote for him, but, you know, I keep asking him on Twitter, hey, you know, what about America First policy and stuff, he still hasn't got, you know, hit me back, but, hey, uh, Jeff Flake is out, not seek re-election, I love it. More here, so people probably wondering, well, does do anything with tax cuts? Well, check out a couple of videos here from Fox Business, and you tell me, I mean, I like about Fox Business, they know when they get the best on their shows, and they have the really good people, really good sources who um, have the scoop pretty much, let you know the mood. Um, and, uh, we're going to check out... do a, a little bit in this one and then a little bit on that one. Grover Norquist, um, it's America for Tax Reform president, I believe, and um, on top of his stuff, especially with all this tax reform going on, um, and he, I'll let you know the mood of what he, at least what he believes between the Corker, Flake, and Trump mood. A lot of people think it's going to hit for tax cuts. But, 
there's a lot of people on the ground, a lot of experts saying that's, that's not going to happen, which I don't think it is either. I mean, it would just completely ruin the GOP if that were to happen, and it wouldn't be good for really anybody, not even the Dems. President joins us now. Good to see you, Grover. Absolutely good to see you. Senator Parker saying the president is basically debasing the debate and he's acting untruthful. Would this fight get in the way of GOP unity on tax cuts? Will it get in the way of the tax cuts? I mean, will, they, will we get the vote? The good news is it won't. Look, uh, Jeff Flake is a solid libertarian Republican. He likes tax cuts. He's for tax cuts. I met with him a week or two ago. He's all excited about the tax cuts. Uh, Corker is a grown-up. He has been a solid uh, free market uh, senator. Uh, and uh, mayor, uh, uh, before this, there's a long record of uh, supporting lower taxes. They abolished the death tax in Tennessee. Uh, they went to zero income tax in Tennessee. Yeah. He understands the, the importance of this. You can have a Twitter fight with the president and cut taxes. You can walk and chew gum at the same time, and both of these senators are quite capable of doing both of those things completely separately. Well, here. See, I mean, it, that's just on him saying that here was the next video we're about to play this was a uh, uh, senator who was in the meeting today that took place with the president and all the other senators uh, talking about tax reform and that's what they had to say breaking discussion but certainly tax reform the important to do it importance to do it importance to us as members uh, in the question and answer segment it was very heavily covered uh, I thought we got a good feel for where we all are. I really did. What kind of details, what, what did you learn that was new that you didn't know before? You know, I didn't really learn anything especially new from the framework that we've seen, but the encouraging part is the president really emphasized, and our members, I think, uh, who asked the questions, to make sure that this, that this tax reform or tax cut is targeted to the middle-income earner. Uh, that's where we want to see the greatest relief. Yeah. Uh, the president also reemphasized the importance of lowering the corporate rate uh, to get growth and to, and to spur uh, job growth. So uh, those were the two main takeaways. Other than that, the, the president expressed flexibility uh, and uh, as this process moves forward. Flexibility on what? Well, flexibility on some of the details. In other words, where the income brackets might be, what the top rate might be, and, uh, those kinds of things. So do you feel like, I mean, and we always say this, when you go to a negotiation, you know up top what you think you might be willing to give away. What are the things out there that you feel like are on the table? There's, there really isn't that big of a rift at all. I mean, yeah, the words don't help that much, but those are two cuck senators that are not seeking re-election anyways. So, you got nothing to worry about. But... I'm sitting here, I see this headline, sitting here, I'm watching Lou Dobbs tonight on Fox Business. Let me see if they're reporting it on Fox News. No, they're still not, they're talking about the uranium deal on Fox News. Let's see about one American news. I couldn't see CNN saying a word about it for the next couple hours until it's unavoidable. Yeah, not on LAN. This is odd. It's 7.16 p.m. This link appeared, I want to say, a half hour ago. Order. That Clinton lawyer we were talking about, I guess, repeatedly denied things. When I tried to report this story, Clinton campaign lawyer pushed back vigorously, saying you or your sources are wrong. They know it's over. They know it's over. I mean, come on. Oh, well, we're going to see where this takes off. Um, yeah. Big stuff, big stuff. I love it. I love it.
Yeah, hell, I was going to go more into uh, corker stuff, tax reform stuff, you know, just basic, the big news of the day. But, um, no, this came out of nowhere. I'm going to have to do some more research into this and get back to it probably tomorrow. I'll have a full breakdown of this. All right, so huge news, really big news tonight. Um, Clinton campaign, DNC paying for the Russian dossier, the Pissgate thing. Um, Boyer's denying it. I mean, he knows it's over. Um, the whole, the whole Democrat House of Cards is tumbling, crashing down right now, completely crashing down. Um, I guess you can say that's part of Trump's way of uh, draining the swamp, um, just letting this stuff spiral out of control. You know. Not forcing his DOJ to do something, but you know, tell him, hey, look at this stuff. What she did on Saturday, he tweeted, he said, DOJ, FBI found out they funded this. They found out, and I mean, you know, we're gonna we're gonna find out the true bad actors. So we are tonight. I broke down um, Corker and Flake. They're out of there, and that um, establishment GOP candidates are on the chopping block. And the Democrats in the red states and the districts that Trump won. Um, are also on the chopping block. So, see where this goes, and like I said, tomorrow I will have a lot more on this uh, Russian dossier story. And um, follow at ViewPolisar, at Cody, EST92, and view www.viewpolisar.com in the coming weeks. So there's nothing going to be on it for a little bit here. Um, I'm doing more of this YouTube thing now. Um, we're going to see where this goes, but, uh, I will post links on my Twitter if I do post something to the website. Um, yeah. Thank you. Have a good night, and we'll see you tomorrow.